Welcome back to another episode of Out of Bounds. My name's Danelle Leva. This is episode 11, and today we're going to talk about everything that happened in 2016. Let's roll that intro and, and the little graphic that I love so much. Welcome back, welcome back. My name is Danelle Leva. This is episode 11. And today, like I said, we will be talking about everything that happened to me in my career in 2016. Not only in my career, but also outside of my career. Before I get started with 2016, I need to go back and talk a little bit about the ending of 2015. Now then, in 2015, this was my fifth world championship team ever. Uh, and it was the first time that I actually went on and and did really well in the all around again since 2012. I had a lot of issues with Ying uh, at this point. He was really just not helpful at all in believing in me whatsoever. I had to constantly try and convince him that I was good enough to compete in the all around, and he was just always diminishing and always just like dismissing me and and my abilities to be an all around gymnast and. It was difficult, but in 2015, it was the first time that I actually, on a world stage, was able to prove myself. I got fourth place in qualifying, and I had messed up. You know, I, I can't remember where I had messed up, but I had messed up on something, and I was like really close to third and second place. So it was the first time that he, for a split second, was like, hmm. Anyways, it didn't end so hot for me in the all around in 2015. You know, my very first event, I had warmed up everything that I needed so quickly in the back because I was so excited and so nervous and so just ready to go. I warmed everything up in like half an hour and I still had like an hour and a half left to go. So the rest of the time I was just trying to keep myself warm. It was dumb. I should have had a better form of regulating it, but Ying, you know what he was doing the whole time? He was just chilling. He was like on his phone and he was just like, yeah, 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 you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. You'll be okay. You know, he would go from, from, constantly like berating me in the gym and being like, oh, you're not doing enough, you're not doing this, blah, 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 to like in composition, just be like, yeah, you know, whatever, you're fine, nah, you're fine, no, nah, everything's fine, don't worry about it. Nah, nah. <laughs> the very first event was floor for me. I was the very first competitor. I did my first pass and I landed so short. I, I'm pretty sure I sprained my ankle. I didn't check, but I had to, t I never taped anything, especially when I was competing, I'd never taped anything. And I needed to tape them up because I, I could like barely walk. I also fell on high bars. It was like the only time that I ever fell in the entire competition on high bar. And it was of course that day. Oh, and worst of all, I competed on my birthday. So like, happy birthday to me. <laughs> really dude, you're gonna be hitting everything. I need a higher table. You know, I need a table that's a little bit higher. That way I don't, I don't hit things. I ended 2015 on a high note. You know, I, I got a silver medal on high bar. P bars didn't, I, you know, didn't go so hot. I wasn't really doing so hot on P-bars. My shoulders were like really bothering me and it was bad. This one especially. This one was like really bad and I'll get into it more in a second. 2016 comes around and trying to to deal with like immense shoulder pains. Like I could barely lift my arm on certain days. My back was like constantly killing me. It, 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 just a bunch of things. And for, for whatever reason, I was going to go compete at national championships, even though I think at that point I didn't need to. I didn't necessarily need to be competing uh, at, at national championships because I had made the world team which means that I was immediately on the national team, but whatever, it doesn't matter. USA Gymnastics also didn't help because they were like constantly changing rules. I, I'm pretty sure at one point they decided that like, oh, we will no longer have that rule where, you know, you're immediately qualified into the national team until August, like, which made no sense because everybody was just coming from a really, really high level intense training to compete at Worlds to then almost immediately having to turn around and compete at national championships to try and make the national team. It was unnecessary, but let's move on. About a week before, I told this story in the in the Superstitions episode, about a week before I was supposed to leave, somebody broke into my car and stole like all of my stuff, you know, including my world medals and the one Olympic medal. And we found those later, but everything else was lost, including my lucky towel, including my, my like personal chalk bucket, including 
brand new grips that I had literally just bought like two weeks before and I was starting to break them in and all like my, my backup grips and just a bunch of stuff. Knowing all of that, we had the option not to go and compete at national championships, but no, Ying wanted to go. My shoulder was messed up. My back was not doing well. I had brand spanking new grips and anybody that trains gymnastics can tell you that having brand new grips is not ideal if you're about to go to a competition. Like if you don't have the grip, the pair of grips that you wear every single day that are ready to go and a backup pair that are a little new, but they're still ready to go, then you're not prepared. And I had two brand spanking new grips right out of the bag. Like it was insane. And again, high bar is like my event, that was, that was like my event. So for me to not have grips that were prepared was a big deal, whatever. Knowing all of that, Ying decided that he we wanted to go to the Winter, Winter Cup Challenge in Las Vegas. I got there, my grips for, I don't know how, somehow I got them broken in enough so that I can feel comfortable enough to actually try and throw most of my routine. I was not doing well. Like my head was absolutely not in it. I, my body was not in it. It was not okay. I tried competing. I did like my vault and I landed really poorly. I think I sat it down again, like just furthering my like back pain and my shoulder pain. I tried to go on PRs. I was like slipping all over the place. I just, I wasn't in it. I wasn't in it at all. I, could, I couldn't do it. And I decided not even to finish the routine. I was just like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't lift my arm. I can't do anything. And then all of these people decided to start giving me so much shit, talking about how disrespectful, talking about how unsportsmanlike I was for not finishing a competition, for not finishing the routine. Like you have no idea the amount of shit that I was dealing with before actually even getting there. Shut, shut, sit down, sit down, please. I went back home, obviously, even more. That, that whole fiasco reinforced even more Ying's ridiculous idea that I was not an all around gymnast. I, I think we went to like one more competition in like Houston or something like that. I can't remember what it was. It, oh, no, 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 no. I, I had an assignment to go to Stuttgart. Uh, maybe I wanna say, I don't know, at some point. And I was gonna show him that I was more than good enough to be competing in all around. And he was like, oh, you're not, blah, blah, blah. and I was like, dude, trust me. And he, this was what he said. He goes, the only way that I'm gonna continue to support you in your all around is if you, get a, if you get a medal in Stuttgart in the all around. And I was like, all right. I went to Stuttgart. I, I was forced to water down uh, my routine on floor because my Achilles were like really, really not good at that point. They were, I, I was like genuinely terrified that they were going to tear at like any minute, literally any minute. I just felt that they were just like, <laughs> so I watered, watered down a little bit once, once I got there. That being said, I messed up on people as I literally fell through the bar. I was doing that skill that it's like, you go from your upper arms, you do a back tuck, then you like do a half turn and you catch again on your upper arms. My arm went all the way through and I fell on my, like on my side. I literally, I like fell and I was like, oh. I, I had no idea what had just happened. I got up, I repeated it. I finished the routine, all good. Did my high bar routine, great high bar routine. I think I stuck it, maybe, maybe not. I don't remember. All of that being said, I got second place in the all around. Second place with the fall on one of my two best events. And I looked at him and I was like, and he was like, yo, yo, okay, we'll keep, we'll keep practicing all around. I was like, yeah. My therapist at the time, her name is Sulma, she literally looked at him. Oh, because at that point I had just gotten an MRI on my shoulder and it said that it was torn 50%, 50% torn. And Sulma, she was looking at it. She was like, I don't, this, this can't, this, this can't be right. This can't be right. Your shoulder is hanging off. And I was like, well, that's what it feels like. And then she said, all right, okay. Okay. And she went up to Ying and she said, he's going to go to this competition and then he's going to stop training for two weeks. And he was like, Whoa, no. Yeah. And she goes, you either let him stop training for two weeks to do therapy or I'm never going to treat him again. And he's definitely going to tear his shoulder and he's not going to be able to do anything ever again. And he was like, oh, oh, oh. and she was like, okay. So I'm gonna treat him enough so that he can bear the competition and he can do enough to actually finish the competition. But as soon as he's done, he's gonna stop training, period, completely for two weeks. And he's only gonna do therapy and conditioning with me. And after those two weeks, then we'll come back and then he'll start training. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's exactly what happened. 
I had to stop training. By the way, I got stronger in those two weeks. I literally like bulked up and everything and got like way stronger, obviously, because I wasn't taking so much goddamn impact on my body. I came back. Of course, I didn't have like my routines immediately back, but I got them back incredibly quickly because obviously I was able to do more and more repetitions. And then uh, at this point, I can't remember if I had another, I don't think I had any other, uh, any more assignments, but I think that, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what happened. I had the very last national team training camp. And this is, oh wait, before I say that, before I say that, something very important happened uh, a couple weeks before that national team training camp. I actually believe this happened a little bit before the Stuttgart assignment where my teammate, an old teammate of mine that he, you know, we grew up together. He and his family were opening up a new pizza deli res restaurant. I think that's what it was called, like the pizza deli or something like that. And he had like a soft opening. And of course we like, oh, we're all there. At this point we had, had an athlete that was training with us competing for Colombia. We had a lot of different athletes competing uh, for different international competitions. We had a girl from Puerto Rico that was training at the time, somebody who, um, you know, when I was younger, somebody that competed for Brazil, you know, a couple different athletes that competed for Colombia. My mom actually took one of the girls, well, I think the only girl that competed at the Olympics in 2012 for Colombia. My mom was the one who coached her since she was like really young because my mom's a badass. And so of course, at this time we had this guy, his name was Didier. And he was training with us and he was competing for Colombia. Now, unfortunately for him at this point, there was no real opportunity for him to actually compete at the Olympics in 2016. Like he, you know, just didn't, he didn't make it. Which meant that the only way that he can compete at an Olympics would be to try for the next one this year, 2020. Now, at this soft opening, I was standing right here and Ying was standing six, maybe seven feet in front of me. And he was turned away and I'm not sure, I'm still not sure whether or not he knew that I was there, whether or not he did all of this on purpose, but I was standing right there, maybe six or seven feet away. And he turns to these people that were there that he's like saying hi to or whatever. And Didier was next to him and he puts his arm around him and he goes, hey, I want to introduce you to my next Olympic medalist. And of course, at this point, I was still in the whole process of trying to make the Olympic team, trying to actually make it to the Olympics. And again, Didier had no more chance to compete at 2016, which means that the only reason he said that is because he probably believed that there was no way that I was gonna make the Olympic team. He didn't say it yet. But fast forward to when I said I had one more national team training camp that I had to do. The day, that day that I was leaving, I was at uh, my ex-girlfriend's house and she walks up to me and she says, hey, listen, there's something I gotta tell you. And I go, what's up, what's going on? And she goes, look, I'm really sorry, but I overheard Ying talking to one of the coaches and he said that he believes that you're not gonna make the Olympic team. I started bawling my eyes out so hard. I, I was crying so hard that I was literally like, cur like curled up next to the toilet in the bathroom, just sobbing my eyes out. Like, not, let's, not only my coach, the coach who is supposed to believe in me 100%. Not him, not just him. He's not the only person that said it, but it was also my stepdad, the only father figure at that point that I had in my life. He said that about me. And I was training so goddamn hard. I was dealing with so much shit at that point to try and make the Olympics and try and make the Olympic team and all this stuff. And then I get this. I go, I go to this national team training camp alone, by the way, because he had also decided not to go with me. I, don't, I genuinely don't even remember any of it. Whatever, I went, I got back on a Sunday. That very same Wednesday, I woke up to my mom screaming that the dogs that we had, we had two male American, uh, American bulldogs, they were fighting. They were like really, really going at it. Fair warning, I'll put this I'll put a, a, like a very quick clip of what the aftermath of the room looked like. It looked like this, but it, lo it looked like a, like a murder scene, obviously. And it was so bad. They were fighting for like an hour and a half. I, w I went in, I tried to separate one of them. I was grabbing one by the chest and I was, which by the way, so wrong. If you ever see two dogs fighting and like you want to separate them, the best way to do it is just grab one of the two dogs by the hind legs 
pick them up and like just drag them backward. You can't get bitten. They can't bite anyone else at that point. That's the best thing. The only problem is, you know, once you let go. If you want to separate them quickly, that's what you do. Anyways, I had I was grabbing one by the chest and I was pulling him back and I was trying to verbalize to my mom, grab that one and put him in the garage. But instead, all I was saying was, mah, 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 mah. the one that I was holding at some point turns and bites me in the leg hard, real hard. And the only thing that I was thinking at that point was, really? Now, now this is happening right now. I was trying to open up his mouth. I was trying to get him off me. I, I, you know, like he was biting all my fingers and doing all this stuff. I, I finally got his mouth open. I pushed him away. I went to go like get away from him. And a second time he bit the same leg. This time, a little harder, a little bit longer. I don't remember how or why he let go. I think that at this point, the other dog had gotten loose from my mom and he went in to like start like whatever, fighting him again and i think that's how he let go i at this point i had left to the hospital you know my aunts had come to pick me up and they drove me to the hospital and for my, what my mom told me the dogs were fighting for an hour and a half you know they obviously had, had to call the police one of them like basically passed away on the way to wherever they were taking them and the other one the one that bit me they literally had to have like a swat team come in and, and take him out and you know both of them were put down obviously that happened four weeks four weeks before the national championships, which by the way, in gymnastics, for those of you who don't know too much about gymnastics, if there's even any of you who follow me who doesn't know anything about gymnastics, in gymnastics, there's two main competitions for the US men's team to try and make the Olympic team, which is national championships and then the Olympic trials. And this was again, four weeks before the national championships, which means I couldn't train for like two and a half weeks I couldn't train at all because of course I had holes in my leg, which by the way, I can show you this one because this one has like a little bit of a grid on it, which means like it kind of covers it a little bit. But this is a picture of me in the hospital and that's, that was my face. That was my face. I showed you that picture to show you, to talk, tell you about how I knew that no matter what, because I had always been this way, that no matter what, no matter what obstacle was put in my way, no matter what was going to happen to me, I wasn't going to let anything stop me from pursuing and going after my dream, going after like my actual goals. For the first, I don't know, for the first five days, the whole time I had to sleep with my leg elevated, of course, because like my, my leg was, my leg was so goddamn swollen that it was literally a tempur mattress. Like you would push on it and it would stay with that little hole on it. It was ridiculous. It was so painful. The first five days or whatever it was, whenever I would put my leg down, especially in the mornings when the meds would like wear off, the blood would rush down and the amount of pain that I would be in was unbearable. So I would have to wake up and then I would have to like hobble to the bathroom with like my hands on the floor and my leg up in the air. And then when I got to the toilet, I had to like put my leg up like this or like on the wall or something. I it, Thank God I, I was and still am a little flexible because Jesus. I had to I had to have a compression sock obviously after a while you know like to help the swelling go down quicker again you know but it was it was to the point where again it was only 4 weeks before the national championships I had gotten to wherever it was that we were competing and I still had this the, that compression sock on and people looked at me and they were like what's that and I was like it's nothing it wasn't even 100% healed yet right but I was already tra I was training for like a week and a half and I didn't tell anybody, obviously. And I got there and I competed and I did a fine job. I did fine. Like I didn't do terribly. I didn't do absolutely awful. You know, I didn't compete to my absolute best, but I also didn't do that that terribly. Technically, I didn't even make the Olympic trials, but they selected me to go to the Olympic trials. And I was like, okay. So those next two weeks, I trained so goddamn hard. Harder than I, I think I had ever trained in my entire life. Went to the Olympic trials, had the two best days of competitions, I think, in my entire life. I don't know what place I ended up in. I, I'm pretty sure at some point I saw myself in like third or something like that. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't remember. And I was like, yes, here we go. You know, like finally, like I did it, you know, like now back on track. Now we get to go to the Olympics, blah, blah, blah. So they call, they call, they call us to the back and they're going to like name the Olympic team. And of course, I'm like, all right, here we go. And they start naming people and... 
they don't call me. They don't call my name. I'm not on the Olympic team. And then they, they, na- they named the three alternates, and I'm one of the three. And I was obviously completely devastated. And it was really interesting because actually, my very last event that I competed at the Olympic trials was floor. And I did a rather good floor routine. I think I baby, I just like didn't stick all the landings. I had like a little step here and there, a little hops here and there. And I think I might have stepped out. And on my floor routine, star value was I think like a 16-4 at that point. And I ended up getting like a 13-something without falling. And I saw that score and immediately I knew, immediately I knew. I, t- I looked at Ying and I told him, I said, they're not going to put me on the Olympic team. Don't say that. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't say that. You did a great job. I was like, they're not going to put me on the Olympic team. Sure enough, they didn't put me on the Olympic team. I went back home, obviously devastated, but I was like, determined that I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't give a shit. I really don't care. No matter what, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them that they made a mistake. I'm going to show them that they were wrong, that I'm more than good enough, that I'm better than all these motherfuckers. (laughs) I'm going to show them that they need to put me on the team. There was so much political bullshit that at that point, and so much gaslighting going on to me and so many, so many of us, that we obviously had no, we didn't really fully understand. Only in retrospect and a little bit can we finally start to understand everything that was happening. I thought that's what it was. I thought that I wasn't good enough. Of course, I went to the very last, it was like the Olympic team training camp before we were actually leaving to the Olympics. And I was doing, I was doing my job. I was doing everything that I was supposed to be doing. And still, you know, they were just like, eh, you're the alternate. Unfortunately, John Orozco does a dismount on high bar and just, and the way he landed, he just really bad, just a really weird, awkward landing and his knee just completely like gave out and like blew out, tore his all, all, like all his shit. And it was so devastating, dude, because like, you know, he had just gone through a bunch of stuff too. And like, he had finally made the Olympic team and it was like such a big deal for him. And it was tough. And like everybody kind of knew out of the three alternates who was supposed to, who was there specifically to replace him because we had the exact same events because like it was, it was like completely interchangeable at that point as far as like strength in events and gymnastics and stuff. And still with all of that, they took their time and like, you know, they made the process go so much longer than it should have. They were really delaying everything for whatever reason. Mark Williams, who was the head coach at that point, got upset with them and he goes, hey, you either pick the Olympic team today or I will because I need to know what to do with the team. I need to figure out what I'm gonna do. And I go, okay. And I still remember, I think it was the very next morning when they finally like selected me onto the team, the person who did it was, damn near had a tear in his eye because he was almost like regretful about actually naming me to the team. That night, of course, I was like kind of like down and I just, it's a, it's a weird bittersweet moment, you know? Like that's not how I want to make the Olympic team. I don't want to make it because somebody else got hurt. I want to make it because I'm more than good enough to make it. I go back to Orozco's room that night and I'm just like, yeah, man, I don't know. And he looks at me and he goes, hey, man, shut up, dude. I need you to go out there and I need you to do it for you and I need you to do it for me. And I was like, you got it, man. I didn't cry in front of him, but like I damn near felt like I should have or almost did. Fast forward the Olympics. I was going there. At this point, I was really doing well in my all around. I was really doing really well. I, was, I felt strong. But my back decided not to feel so strong. And when I was doing floor, you know, every time I would do it, like it would hurt a little bit more, a little bit more. Of course, I didn't say anything. I didn't care. I didn't care. I, I would break myself before like ever saying that I was in pain. But what happened was I was doing therapy. And at one point, I was going to wrap something around my leg, around my foot. And when I was standing up, I just, I don't know, I threw my back out. I don't know what it was. It was the second time that it ever happened to me. The first time was in 2014 at World Championships and now this time. And it was like a couple days before podium training. I couldn't walk. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't do anything. It was like, it was so much pain. They had to give me, you know, they had to do acupuncture. They put like, you know, KT tape and stuff like that. I couldn't do anything for like, two and a half days. At that point, you know, I made the decision with Ying that, you know, I was like, whatever, you know, I can't do all around. If I do all around, I'm not gonna be able to do the other events. So I'll just do the three events that the team needs me the most on, which was Palma Horse, P-Bars, and High Bar. Whatever, I did my thing, you know, first day comes around, made it into finals on P-Bars and High Bar, which was awesome. Did well, teams did well, all good. Team finals comes around and whatever everybody messed up and stuff like that or not everybody some of us messed up and then high bar comes around and i was like the very last competitor and i fall and of course at that point it was like 
everybody was blaming me again like oh because of him you know like they lost the medal because of him this and that and of course like to an extent i believed it even though i didn't want to like actually listen to it i believed it and then mark comes up to me like a day later or something like that and he goes hey i need you to understand something if you would have done a perfect routine if you would have had a perfect score we still would have got would not have gotten a medal and i was like what he was like yeah don't worry about it don't worry about it you did your job you had a fall whatever it happens but regardless we weren't going to get a medal and i was like oh shit it helped trust me it helped at this point i was like really frustrated you know still like in the gym still like really putting a lot of pressure on myself and like really being like i gotta do the thing i gotta prove myself and blah 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 not just ying i gotta prove myself to like them and i gotta to everybody and to myself blah. and my mom comes up to me like two days before p bars and high bar finals and she sees me, she's like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, nothing, you know? Yeah, I feel great, I feel great, yeah, yeah, I feel great, yeah. And she's like, you sure? And I was, yeah, yeah. She's like, hey, what's going on? I was like, I don't know, man, I'm fucking, I can't make my high routine, and I just, I gotta, I gotta, do this. and she's like, I need you to understand something real quick. No matter what happens, moving forward, for the rest of your life, in Olympic history, in 2016, you were one of the eight best athletes in the entire world on two events. Yeah, no, I know, but... She was like, shh, shh. She's like, do you know how many people make it to the Olympics? Do you know? She's like, the amount, the percentage? I was like, yeah, yeah. She was like, okay. Do you know how many people get a medal at the Olympics? Like, yeah, no, I know. She was like, yeah, you have already done that, but now... Out of those people, out of that small, small group of people, do you know how many of those actually make a second Olympics? Yeah. She's like, yeah. You're at your second Olympics, and you're in two finals. So just go out there and enjoy yourself. Go out there and do the best that you can. <sighs> she really changed my perspective. She really changed the way that I approached everything. That, you know, whatever it was... I think it was the next day that I had the individual event finals. I woke up and I swear to God, I was like laughing. I was like, I just felt so good. I just, I felt it. I just, I knew something big was going to happen. I don't know what, but I knew something big was going to happen. And it was also like a really cool, interesting coincidence that like, that was the very last day of, of competition for gymnastics at the Olympics. You know, I was the very first competitor on parallel bars, which was the very first event. And I was the very last competitor on high bar, which was the very last event. And I couldn't do it. I was not landing a single P bar dismount. I was either on my butt or over rotating. On my butt, over rotating. I couldn't figure it out. I don't know what the hell was going on. I just couldn't. I couldn't. I was like, boom, 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 boom. Couldn't make it. Competition comes around and I do a really good P bar routine. I think I had like maybe like a little. If I had a step, whatever, it doesn't matter. One of, my, one of my best routines ever. And I stick my dismount somehow. And I'm like, rah! Oleg goes, you know, like whatever. Everybody else goes. And, and then Oleg goes. And I, I'm in first like the whole time. And then he goes and then he bumps me down by like a tenth or whatever it was. Which well deserved to him because he had just gotten second in the all around. And, you know, like he needed that gold. And then I'm up on the podium. And I'm like literally, I'm just like looking over the side to high bar. I'm not even I, don't even, I don't even feel the fact that I have just gotten a, an Olympic medal at all. I'm just there on the podium and I'm super focused on high bar. I'm just like staring and I'm just like, you're next. <laughs> Whatever, I go to the back gym, you know, the girls do phenomenal on floor. Ali and Simone kill it, obviously. You know, I do my thing, I'm just kind of chilling, just still just kind of just going with it, right? I go out, I do my high bar routine. I'm like the very last competitor. I do my high bar routine and I like do a re really good high bar routine. And unfortunately, I didn't stick it. Whatever, dude. I didn't care. At that point, I was so excited because I knew that I was retiring. And I was just like, in the air, I was like, retired. It was amazing. You know, I was so happy. Fabi got his gold. Like, he was well-deserved gold. I think it was his fourth Olympics ever. And it was cool because he was like, first Olympics, he went to finals. Second Olympics, he got third. Third Olympics, he got second. And the fourth Olympics, he got first. It was beautiful. Very serendipitous. Go up to him, like hugging him. We're all so happy. I'm up on the podium. And I look over at my mom's in the stands crying. And I almost start crying. I'm like, don't cry, don't cry. You're on TV, don't cry. It was a great way to end, to end my career. You know, after that, like I said, I knew I was retiring. I knew I was going on tour. I was like going to enjoy myself as much as I could. That was an, uh, an experience in itself. I feel like that that deserves its own episode separately. But that tour only reinforced the fact that 
what I wanted to do for the rest of my life was to be a performer, to be an actor, you know, just to be a performer. And, and I did it, you know, and then I decided to make the move to LA, hustling really, really hard, you know, it was, it was interesting because the last half basically of 2016 was so vastly different than the first half, you know, it almost, it genuinely almost feels like two completely separate years. And I'm so grateful for everything that happened, honestly, because it really set, gave me a completely different perspective on how to approach life and how to approach anything. And, and I feel like that's now kind of my responsibility, you know, to, to give my perspective, to give my experience and to help people, try and help them with anything that I can in their path, whatever it may be, not only in gymnastics, but literally in anything. And now I'm doing this and I'm actually really excited about doing this podcast because a couple people are starting to watch and pay attention and, and, and I'm just, I'm enjoying myself. This is fun. It's a little tough because sometimes I have to, you know, I, I get really busy and I have to switch the day where I, when I uh, uh, record and, and when I post, well, I'm not going to switch the day of when I post, but like the day of when I record and when I have to edit and all this stuff, but it's fun. And I'm, and I'm really enjoying myself. And I'm just like doing a lot of the things that I actually have always wanted to do and I never had the chance because I was super focused on gymnastics. That was my 2016. Thank you again. Next week, I don't know yet what we're talking about. I'm gonna brainstorm and I'm gonna figure it out. Uh, me and my homie Sarah, which is my producer, we're gonna figure it out. I hope you guys liked last week's episode with Cami. She's phenomenal. If you didn't watch it, please go check that out. She was great, it was a great episode. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this week. I'm gonna go eat something, I think, right? Sure, peace.